Hello and welcome to part two of my Raspberry Pi 20W in my robot series, where I take the 2W and try putting it back into experiments and chapters from my Learn Robotics Programming second edition book. Now, I like all my Pies to run headless. That is, no keyboard, no screen, no wires, so they don't need to plug into anything other than batteries to power them. And in this part, we're going to take the steps to set up a headless Raspberry Pi 02W, configuring the software, the tools, the Wi-Fi, the settings, so then we've got it ready to use in other, uh, other parts for robotics. For some extra adventure, we're going to try this with Raspberry Pi 64, and this could get bumpy. For this well you're gonna need first your Raspberry Pi you're gonna need an SD card now it should be at least 16 gig uh, preferably even 32 what have we got here well that's actually a 16 gig um, but for some of the experiments where we get into things like voice control you're gonna want a bigger card although we do do that on a second car so 16 gig is probably fine on the robot um, you're gonna need a USB micro cable preferably connected to a 5 volt 2.1 amp power supply and this one uh, if you look at it there we go that is a 5 volt 2.1 amp power supply it's actually a raspberry pi branded one very nice uh, you're going to need your wi-fi network and you want to know what your wi-fi credentials are and have them ready and your computer probably should be on the same network um, you're also going to need an sd card reader so uh, my SD card was really plugged into one. I kind of like these little things. I think they came with one brand of them uh, and I've been using them for other ones. Um, that one's Kingston branded, um, except I think the SD card is SanDisk branded. Hurrah! Doesn't matter, the brands will work together, but that's just a tiny little USB to SD card adapter. Um, for the software, um, you're going to need a browser and you're going to need some kind of terminal. These are all going to be on your laptop anyway. And then for everything else, we're going to get into how you download it and how you get started. So first, let's head to Raspberry Pi and get the imager. I'll head over here. We go get software, Raspberry Pi OS, install using the Raspberry Pi imager. That's all we want. We'll download for Mac OS and we can save that to our downloads. Yes, there's one I repaired earlier. You can fire up the uh, Raspberry Pi imager and you'll be able to use that to put your ROS on the Raspberry Pi uh, or on the SD card. So I'll put my SD card in now. Now's your time to put it in. I'm just going to click ignore because it doesn't like what's on the SD card already. So first we want to choose our ROS and I am going to say Raspberry Pi OS Other. And we should have a Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64 bit. We want Lite because we don't want the desktop environment. And I'm trying out 64 bit because, well, 64 bit is the future. Uh, we choose storage and we've got um, device. Now, before we write, we've also got a few other things to do. So we hit the gear icon here. When you click this, it might ask you if you want the Wi-Fi password from the system keychain. As you'll see in my section on things that didn't work so well, uh, in the current version, this doesn't appear to work. So you're better off saying no thank you. And uh, where you can configure the wireless LAN, Use your SSID and paste your password in here. Uh, you may also, so in these you can set the uh, Raspberry Pi host name. We'll set this to uh, 02W Robot. You want to enable SSH. Now you can either have password authentication or public key. If you've already got SSH on your computer, this is beautiful because you don't have to type anything. If not, do set a pass username and password give it a new password for this Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you're outside the UK, you can also set your locale settings. Um, you can get it to eject it when finished. I think that's a good idea. I don't normally go for playing extra sounds uh, and I normally leave telemetry turned on. Um, so all of these options means we get something that's gonna be pre-configured. And now we hit right and it's a good time to go and get yourself a cup of tea. One more thing, you may be asked for a password before it finishes its right, so just give it the password and then go get your cuppa. 
great thing about this Raspberry Pi imager is it goes through a verifying stage where it takes what it's written to the disk and just checks it to make sure it can read it back. So when you're done, you'll get a nice helpful message telling you you can remove the card. And that means you can now fire up the Pi and put it in the Pi. Another thing of note, you might notice your SD card is a little bit toasty warm after writing. So it's at this point you pop the card into the Pi and power the Pi up. There are two USB cable ports on the Pi Zero. I think for powering it, either is fine. Now, without screen keyboard and mouse, you can't really tell what it's doing. When you plug it in, you'll see the light flash a little bit just to show that it's doing some things. When you get a solid light after all the flashing, that means that it has booted. So we call this 02W Robot, and that should be a dot .local. So basically, Ping sends a uh, network signal across to the Pi to go, hey, are you there? And looks for something with that 02W Robot dot .local address. Um, dot local means on your local network. So it's just seeing if it is it there, unknown host is, it couldn't find it. If it's there, that's what we should see. So now it's pinged it, it's found it, it's sending data. You can see it's sent data and received data. Press Control C to stop this. Uh, and then we can do SSH pi at, and we can do 02w robot dot local. Now, it's permanently added it to the list of known hosts. You may be asked if you want to add it, yes or no. I've kind of allowed this Pi already. Um, and then if you type your password, you shall be greeted with this. Uh, this now means you are interacting with this Raspberry Pi. So now we're logged in. What do we need to do next? The uh, securing your Pi, we've skipped. The rebooting and reconnecting, well, we have rebooted and reconnected. Um, we've skipped the step of actually naming, renaming it. Um, so we can get straight into uh, updating the software on it. So when you get a Pi, uh, when you get your Pi off on the Pi, it's not going to have the most up-to-date packages because these images are only made every few months, whereas the packages are updated on a more frequent basis. So if you do a sudo apt update, which will update the, uh, the package lists, uh, so it'll know which versions there are, and then sudo apt upgrade. And the minus y just means it's going to ask you lots of questions. You're going to say yes. Hit enter. And this might take a while. This is a good moment to go and get yourself a cup of tea. Now, my favourite tea at the moment, uh, I quite like Red Bush. Uh, I sometimes like to drink it just as is, but sometimes I like Red Bush with a little dash of milk as if it was an English breakfast tea. Okay, that looks like it's done. The other thing we're going to do, and notice this pseudo thing, which means we're just asking it to uh, super user do. We're doing a Raspberry, Raspberry Config. And uh, let's just turn on some of our interfaces. So we want I2C. And now legacy camera. This might be one of these 64 bit issues. I think we might have to dig at what that means some more. Hmm. Um, SSH is already enabled. Uh, as far as I know, we don't use any SPI devices. So I2C should be enough. And we'll go here and we'll do a finish. Uh, ooh, mod probe. And this is again, possibly another 64 bit issue. Hmm, right, let's do a reboot. Now we've got our updated version. Pseudo reboot just tells it to reboot. And it'll should disconnect us. There you go, closed by remote host. And at this point, you should probably wait for it to flash at you a bit. And uh, when it stops flashing, you can try and connect back to it. This might take a while. Oh, we're in. By the way, if you mistype something, including your password, so if you type a test line, the Control and U erases that line so you can type a new line. In fact, if I've got something and I'm ha if I can move your left and well, if you move your left and right cursor keys, you can erase the beginning of the line with Control U. You can erase the end of the line with Control K. So these are handy things to know when typing on a terminal. So this Pi is ready to run robot experiments.
it's headless in that I could connect to it remotely. And that means that we don't need a keyboard, monitor or mouse, only power. Now, before I'm finished for the day, I'm going to do a pseudo power off to power the Pi off, which is a friendlier way than just pulling the plug on it. Uh, although if it's in a robot, pulling the plug on it may happen reasonably frequently. Just watch out for SD writes. When you type this, you shall see the lights go out on your uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, Zero W2. At that point, you can just unplug it. With that off ready, uh, we'll be able to get into replacing the Raspberry Pi 3A physically, or 3A plus, physically with 0.2W and making it fit into that existing robot. So before I go and call this video done, let's just say things didn't quite go to plan. And as promised, part of this video series is I will show where things didn't work out, how they didn't work out. Uh, so while the beginning of the video I've edited in what did work so you can just follow the beginning towards the end we can see what didn't work and perhaps what i had to do about it so what didn't work and well it's going to pre-fill the password that won't be available on all losses but on the mac os that's kind of handy if we ping it we should if it's awake be able to see it oh it hasn't found it yet Okay, so that didn't go as planned. I tried to ping it and find out my network and I couldn't. So the lights are on. And if I unplug it and plug it back in and these two ports don't appear to matter. We see the light flashing. Actually, the light is solid on now. So there we go, lights flashing. So it's doing something, it's preparing something, it's booting. But why it's not connecting to my Wi-Fi, why I don't actually, I'm not able to ping it or see it. And I actually went to my uh, router to see if I could see the IP there, as in the internet address and the name there. I don't know. So, shouldn't need to do this with a headless item. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take these. So, let's start with this. This is a uh, tiny uh, or small HDMI adapter to normal HDMI, which works with the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero series. Uh, standard HDMI cable over here. And finally, got a, a HDMI video capture. So it was a USB HDMI video capture. It means I can screen grab what's going on on this Pi. That was a ton of trouble. Um, first thing is my USB capture card doesn't appear to be working so well with the Pi anymore. Uh, so I had to plug it into a real TV. Again, you shouldn't need to do this. Uh, I had to dig around uh, and it turns out that the option to transfer your uh, um, Wi-Fi settings in from the Mac OS key ring didn't work. I had to manually replace the password. So if you use that uh, um, Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, Raspberry Pi imager, the Wi-Fi settings, probably better you type your password because the key, yeah, unfortunately the password key ring bit, it did something wrong, didn't work at all. So. We've now got our Pi ready and it's now nicely powered off. Um, in the next video, we're going to use it to replace the uh, physical 3A plus just uh, here inside this robot. I'm just trying to get the right angle to show you what's going on this one here. And uh, we're going to make it fit into this existing robot build. Um, this would be the equivalent of chapter six in Learn Robotics Programming. Uh, and uh, in the rest of the book, you will learn how to build the robot part by part. Well, that is chapter six, adding motors, adding the wheels, actually building from kit parts and other parts to get to this robot. Um, and then later on in the book, you start to program many interesting behaviors like line following, obstacle avoiding, mobile phone driving, and voice control. Mycroft. Robot, go forward. No robot, we'll start. So if you've enjoyed this, uh, let me know. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please comment down below. Um, and go make stuff and be awesome. Bye. So, <clears throat> um, there are two sub... Um, there <clears throat> Keyboard, no mouse, anything other than something to charge them by, I well, to power them by. They don't need to be plugged in other than something to power them by, i.e. some batteries. Uh, so in this part, we're going to take adapters from my learning rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
right, it's still flashing lights at me. It's not quite done yet. <laughs> you may have to wait a bit. Where I take the 02W and try putting it back into experiments and chapters from my Learn Robotics from my Learn Robotics Programming Second Edition book. What do we call it? We called it. But we should now be able to ping. Uh, what was it now? Um, 02W Robot dot uh, local. I is ready to run experiment. <clears throat> One. 